God wants you to speak faith. Well, praise the Lord, this is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Speak Faith Netcast. I'm so glad you could join us for the Netcast today. I tell you what, I am excited about what God is doing through this Netcast. I've got some exciting stuff to share with you today. I just about can't wait to do it. Before we do, though, let's talk about Word of Faith Radio. That's the first part of my report that I want to give you giving you a report on 2020. 2020 was not a year we want to write home about, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, but, we do have some good news about 2020, and that is this. <clears throat> we had, on Word of Faith Radio, 43,197 listeners in the year 2020. Isn't that amazing? Think about that now. 43,197 listeners to Word of Faith Radio. That's the main station. All right, then the healing station. We had 33,247 listeners to the healing station. 11,315 listeners to the KJV station. And 5,247 listeners to the music station. Now, to be fair... The music station was not up all year long. Uh, We started that station this year, so that's not a full year that that represents. But that's still, that's that's pretty exciting, I gotta say. I am really, really happy about that and pleased that we had, uh, you know, that we just had that kind of response through the radio. Now, I'm still gathering some of the statistics. I'll be giving you more reports as we go along. But let me give you a few others very quickly. Uh, Here at Word of Faith Ministries, this ministry of Word of Faith Ministries, we had 249,535 listeners to our Speak Faith broadcast radio program. Now, that's off of our servers. That doesn't count Word of Faith radio. This is just off of our servers, okay? So in other words, people that listen through uh, iTunes, people that listen through our our various podcast outlets, Blueberry, some of these others, uh, you know, I think we're on Spotify, I think we're on a lot of different venues, but Speak Faith Radio, coming off our servers, 249,535 listeners. Then our uh, teaching is out there as well as a, sort of as a podcast. Uh, Those are our regular uh, teaching messages, which are usually an hour to 90 minutes long. Those messages uh, were 138,529 listeners to those messages. Then we had 10,210 visitors that uh, watched videos off of our video server the server that's right over there. So I am really excited about the outreach that we had during 2020. Uh, and you can you can keep watching. <laughs> hey, man, we've got uh, speakfaith.tv. The Roku channel is out there. We've got speakfaith.tv's live channel, which is always available, sftv.io, as it says there on the screen. And then a new feature that we just added this year is SpeakFaith.today. Okay, SpeakFaith.today is, I call it for short, SpeakFaith.today. That is a web address, believe it or not. You can type that into your web browser. It'll bring up a menu. You can have it on your phone. You can have it on your tablet, whatever. Uh, And you will be able to watch all of our SpeakFaith.tv video ministers right there on Speak Faith to, dot Today or Speak Faith Today. I tell you, good things are happening, folks. You need to realize that we're getting out there with a lot of information. Now, you can get information on all of this at our website, speakfaith.org. That's two words. Speak Faith run together is one. 
speakfaith.org. Speakfaith.org. Check it out. You will be blessed. Amen. I tell you, good things are happening. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can't just stop and say, well, 2020 was a terrible year. I know it wasn't the best in a lot of ways, but uh, in some ways it was really good because we had so many people receiving from the Word of God, so many people that were listening to the Word of God and viewing the Word through our video programs. So people were reached, and that's important. Let me click on uh, my Bible here, Esword, and get that up because I want to get right back into the teaching that we've been doing. This teaching is talking about the full armor of God, God's armor. You can wear God's armor. We want to get right into that today. We left off last time talking about the fiery darts of the devil. I want to expand on that a little bit because we just mentioned it in passing. So let's go find the scripture for that in James chapter 3. James chapter 3 uh, let's just begin at verse 1 of James chapter 3. My brethren, be not many masters or teachers, is really what it's talking about there, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation, which really is talking about judgment. You'll receive the greater judgment if you're a teacher of the Word of God, which I am a teacher of the Word of God. So you might say there's more scrutiny on the teaching ministry because it has the potential to reach a lot of people, to bless a lot of people, to minister to a lot of people. But let's face it, it also has the potential to do the most damage because people can hear things that are not scriptural. And I remember, I like what I heard uh, Pastor Keith Moore say, in order to be scriptural, what do you need? Scripture. <laughs> Amen? So there's a lot of unscriptural teaching out there that is not scriptural. You see what I'm saying? And unfortunately, teachers can be a, a cause of some of that confusion. So that's why there will be greater judgment on the teacher. Uh, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word or with his words, the same as a perfect or mature man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Now you put a bit in a horse's mouth, and you, when you pull the reins, it makes the horse go in a different direction. So that's what it's talking about here. We can turn their whole body. A horse is a very big, powerful beast, but it can be controlled by that little bit in its mouth. Verse 4, Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of the fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Good old King James. That is saying, whichever way the captain wants it to go, he turns the rudder, and that rudder guides the ship. Well, in the same way, the words that you speak out of your mouth direct your life. Guide and direct your life, okay? Uh, verse 5, Even so, the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Now, listen closely to this. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Kindling wood is very small, thin wood that you use to start a fire. If you're a country boy, you know that. I certainly know that. I grew up out in the woods with my dad, and we would start fires with kindling wood. And what he loved to do, he liked to get that rich cedar you know, and strip some of that cedar bark and use that for his kindling. And it would burn almost like it had gasoline built into it. I mean, it was, it would burn and it would start a fire quickly. Well, that's kindling wood. And he'd call it kindling. <laughs> Get us some kindling, boy. <laughs> and so I'd go out and I'd search for some, uh, some cedar bark and pull it down off the edge of the tree. And then I'd come back with that. He'd ball it all up, put it under some some little smaller sticks and little larger sticks, and then light the fire, and it would burn and start those uh, flames burning, and we'd have a fire before in very short order. That's the way kindling, were, kindling wood works. <laughs> All right, let's keep reading. Verse 6, The tongue is a fire, 
a world of iniquity, so is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body, and it, the tongue, setteth on fire the course of nature. Now this, the Greek here is interesting. It's talking about the cycle of natural events. So your tongue, just like a kindling fire, sets in motion the cycle of natural events in your life, and it, the tongue, is set on fire of hell. Now there's what I wanted you to see. The tongue is set on fire of hell. Now let's go back to Ephesians chapter 6 and talk about the whole armor of God again and see how that fits in. Notice what we said. The tongue is what sets in motion the cycle of natural events. And the cycle of natural events that is set in motion by your tongue is called a fire. Okay? So now let's go back to the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6, beginning in verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked." That's what I wanted to get to. The fiery darts of the wicked. Now, I want you to think about this. The devil throws a fiery dart. It sets your tongue in motion because you start saying things that agree with Satan's agenda. Now, I know some of you are going to say, Dr. Bill, I can guarantee I don't say anything in line with Satan's agenda. Oh, really? <laughs> Let's just listen to you for a few days. Let's listen to what you have to say when you're not in church and when you're not thinking about what the Bible says about what you ought to be saying. I know a lot of you. I've been there. You're saying things like, well, it's flu season. Guess I'm going to get the flu. You know, I always get the flu this time of year. Oh, really? Now, let me ask you this. What does Acts 10.38 say? Look it up. <laughs> go with me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the time to go to the book of Acts, chapter 10, and verse 28. Let me just scroll down here. Verse 28. Acts 10, 38. Uh, hold on. <laughs> 10, 38. Why am I not seeing it right here? Acts... 10. Oh, I see what I did. Okay. Silly me. Okay. I was looking at 28. I was like, what in the world's wrong? Because I know it's 1038. Okay. I am not wrong about the reference. I was wrong about what I was staring at on the screen. Acts 1038 says, Hallelujah. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Okay, so where does sickness and disease come from? It is oppression from the devil. Now go back and read it yourself. <laughs> Find it in your own Bible. <laughs> I found it. I just had to get the right verse. Acts 10.38 How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing who? All that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Well, so what, Dr. Bill? All right, here's the thing. Sickness and disease is oppression of the devil. It is part of the devil's agenda. So when he sends that fiery dart at your tongue and gets you to say, well, it's flu season, I guess I'm going to get the flu, I always get the flu this time of year. You are speaking in line with his agenda. He has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. 
John 10, 10. We already talked about that. So he's come to kill, steal, and destroy. But you know what? Let me give you an insight, some inside information. Okay? You ready? This is going to shock you. This is going to be it's going to be one of those things you're going to think, wait a minute now. I don't know if I agree with that. You study it out. You look it up. The devil has no power over you in and of himself. Oh, I know a lot of folks just got their, their you know, uh, pitchforks and their torches. <laughs> Getting ready to come after Dr. Bill now. No, now just put them down. Hold on. Satan's only ability is the ability to deceive. His he ha, his, his mouth, all the teeth have been pulled flat out of it. He's been defanged. All right? Jesus took the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He stripped him of his power. The Word of God says that the devil has been paralyzed. Think about that now. Your enemy has been paralyzed. He has no ability in and of himself except the ability to deceive you. He will use faults. He'll take those faults and he'll interject them and he'll get them in there and you start meditating on them and you meditate long enough, it drops down in your heart and then out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth begins to speak and guess what you're saying? Well, I guess I'm going to get sick like everybody else. See, your mouth has been set in fire, on fire, by the fiery darts of the devil, and that then sets in motion the cycle of natural events. Are you seeing this? Now, I want you to think about this. This being the case, now think about it. This being the case, you can change your whole life if you'll get a hold of that tongue. Now, I'm not talking about literally getting a hold of you. Some of you may need to, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about getting control over your tongue. Now, here's the thing. You go back over to, uh, to James. Let's go back over to James. And uh, let's go back to verse 6. The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and sets on fire or sets in motion the course of natural events in your life and is set on fire of hell for every kind of beast, verse 7, and of birds and of serpents and of things of the sea is tamed and has been tamed of mankind. Or we would say through man's natural ability. But the tongue can no man tame. In other words, the tongue... Your tongue cannot be tamed by man's natural ability, like you would train an animal. Okay? It doesn't work that way. Now, I know some of you said, well, now, now hold on, Dr. Bill. You just got my hopes up <laughs> and said that if I could control my tongue, that I could change my whole life and set my whole life in a different course. And then you turn around and tell me that I can't control it. No, the Bible doesn't say you can't control it. The Bible says you can't control it with man's natural ability. You have to use supernatural means to train your tongue. Now, there's two main areas that you can do or that you can operate in to train your tongue. One is to place a watch on your mouth. David, the psalmist, talked about, Lord, place a watch on my mouth that I might not sin against thee. You need to ask the Lord to pray and ask the Lord supernaturally to put a watch on your mouth. That is just a little early warning system. So that once you pray that prayer to put a watch on your mouth, what's going to happen is the Lord is going to give you a little tickle. Now, it's not, he's not going to shout in your ear. It's just going to be a little notice. Don't say that. It's going to be very quiet. Don't say that. And you got to be listed for it, okay? So you're about to go off on a tangent and rant about how you always get sick this time of year. And down in your spirit, there's a little tickle that goes, don't say that. If you'll pay attention to that, you won't say it. 
then the second part of this is whatever is in your heart in abundance is what comes out of your mouth. Okay? That is a spiritual law. I want you to write that down. It is a spiritual law that whatever is in your heart in abundance, that's your spirit man, comes out of your mouth. Therefore, whatever you put in your heart in abundance is what's going to come out of your mouth. So if you want good things coming out of your mouth, which we do, then what we need to do is we need to put good things in. We had a computer term many years ago, still is as far as I know, garbage in, garbage out. You put unbelief and teaching in, you're going to get unbelief out. You put junk in, you're going to get junk out. All right? Same thing with the Word of God. You've got to take the Word and put it in your heart. How do you do that? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Romans 10, 17. So take the Word, listen to it, hear good teaching, just like you're hearing right now, good teaching of the Word, get it in your heart, build it in there in abundance, and you'll begin to speak correctly. Now, I'm not talking about just, well, I don't cuss. Well, of course you shouldn't be cussing. Come on, folks. I mean, please. <laughs> Christians ought not be cussing. All right? But and a lot of people read this scripture over in James, and they think, oh, he's telling me I need to control my tongue, not cuss. Well, yeah, obviously. But that's not what we're talking about, really, when it comes right down to the cycle of natural events in your life. What we're talking about there is not confessing lack, not confessing disease, not confessing calamity. There are a lot of parents that say, I just know my child's going to get out there in the car and he's going to get in the car wreck. Well, you're speaking that and you're believing that from your heart and it's going to come to pass if you're not careful. So you need to stop that right now. Just shut it off. Well, Dr. Bill, how do I do that? Two principles, remember? Ask the Lord to put a watch on your mouth. Build the Word of God into your heart. You need to start saying of your children, My children are raised in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. When they're old, they will not depart from it. They are guided by the Holy Ghost. They're surrounded by the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood in their lives. They are supernaturally protected. That's what, would, what needs to come out of your mouth. Not this woe is me, they're going to get in a car wreck. That is a good way to get your kids in a car wreck. And there's a whole lot of people wondering, why is my life the way it is? Your life's the way it is because the cycle of natural events have been set in motion by your own tongue. You are the reason that things that the devil wants to happen in your life happen. Because he set your tongue on fire of hell got you to think it on those things, got you to meditate on those things, built it down into your heart, and now you're saying it out of your mouth. And they start happening. And that is a shame. That should not be the case. You are a believer. You need to believe the Word of God. You need to speak the Word of God. You need to act on the Word of God. You need to enforce the Word of God in your life. Amen. All of this is why we put on the whole armor of God. In order for the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. Now, how does it do that? You put your faith up for that protection. You put your faith up by getting the word of God into your heart. You use the shield of faith. You use the whole armor of God to stand against the powers of principalities, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places, all the forces of hell that might try to be arraigned against you, guess what? You can stop them with the whole armor of God. Like I said last time, they see that armor coming down the street, they don't know but what that is God. 
They don't know it's you in there. Shut the faceplate. <laughs> and they won't know. They'll just see God coming. And they'll be listening for God to speak the word. And you, you know that if God speaks the word, they have to obey. Well, it's the same thing. You have the Holy Ghost within you. You have God's word on your lips. You speak the word of God, and they have to obey. Get out of here, devil. And they got to do it. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. We're getting into some things. We've got another, at least another teaching on this that we're going to be doing next time. But for right now, I want to share with you my uh, email address. Email address is drbill, D-R-B-I-L-L, at speakfaith.org. You can write me there. You can also write me at my regular mailing address, Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213, High Point, North Carolina, the zip code 27262, all right? And 5213-5213, uh, however you want to say it, it works. You can go there, uh, write that down, and send me a letter. If you want to contribute to the ministry, of course, we're open to that. You heard all the statistics of our outreach. Whoo, hallelujah. I tell you, I'm excited about that. And... 2021, guess what? 2021, we're going to have another great year. We're going to have statistics at the end of that year, of this year coming up, and we're going to share with you how much word is going forth out of Word of Faith Ministries. If you want to get into that, be part of that, by being a partner with our ministry, praise the Lord, I would love it. And I tell you what, it will be a blessing to you. I can tell you, this ministry is good ground to plant seed into. Amen? And if you want to do that, you can contribute any amount, anytime. Whether you do it regularly, like on a monthly basis or weekly basis or whatever, that's entirely up to you. Whether you do it as a one-time gift, that's entirely up to you. We don't berate people about giving to the ministry. We don't say, oh, you got to give or we're going off the air. We ain't going off the air. <laughs> and we're going to keep growing and going stronger all the time. It's just whether you want to be part of what we're doing and receive supernaturally, spiritually, from the benefits of being a partner in this ministry. Praise the Lord. And I just want to make that available to you, particularly for this new year and, and talking about all the things that the ministry is doing. I just wanted to make that available to you. So praise the Lord. You can join us again next time. Remember until then to fulfill the Word of God. God wants you to speak faith. The Speak Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.